In this video, we're going to look at two special things about number theory. Um, one of them is called twin primes, and the other is called the Goldbach conjecture. So let's start with the definition of twin primes. Twin primes are primes that are two units apart. So for example, 3 and 5. And let's make a little notation so I can point this out for you. Let's pick a pretty color. Um, so here we can see 3 and 5 are two units apart. Same thing, 5 and 7 are two units apart. But when I look at 7, um, where there would be a 9, 9 not prime, so I wouldn't call that a twin prime. So what we're looking for are these little pairs that are just two units apart. So again, next prime 11 has 2 away, 13, so there's another twin prime. Now, everything won't be a twin prime just because it's a prime. Like if you look at 2, 3 is right next door, so that's only one unit away, so it doesn't match that twin thing that's defined. Um, you can see 17 and 19, definitely twin primes. But then again, 23 is kind of like all by itself. There's blank on the left, there's blank on the right. So there's this space in between 19 before I get to 23 and 23 before I get to 29, where I just don't have any primes. So it's just a definition. It's what mathematicians decided they would call it, that they would call it twin primes. So I'm just looking for a space of two. Okay, so let's look at that again. So why don't we go back to our chart and list all the twin primes between 20 and 40. So I'm hoping you are sitting with your little sheet of paper that we had from previous, from last week, where it had all the prime numbers um, so that you can look at it. That's how I would want you to do the homework. That's how I want you to do the test, where you're looking at the prime numbers and you're deciding, okay, what follows this particular definition we're looking at. So when you're looking at your chart, hopefully what you see between 20 and 40 are just the two numbers 29 and 31. And let's back up to the little sheet I had earlier so we can see it. So 20 would be here, 40 would be here, and when I'm looking, 23, nothing. 29 has a twin of 31, and then nothing more. So there was my answer. These are the kind of questions I can ask you about twin primes, ask you for identification, um, I tell you between two numbers or just numbers less than a certain thing, but nothing big going on here, just making sure we know the definition. All right, so let's talk about something interesting about twin primes. Um, except for 3 and 5, they don't fit into this. All the other twin primes um, turn out to be of the form 6x minus 1 and 6x plus 1. So what does that mean? Let's look at the chart. See down here in this chart where I have 1? I did 6x minus 1, so 6 times 1 minus 1 is 5, and then if I have 6 times 1 plus 1, I get 7, and 5 and 7 are twin primes. If you do 2, same thing, 6 times 2 minus 1, 12 minus 1 is 11, and then 6 times 2, which is 12 plus 1 is 13, and wow, look at that again, we have twin primes, 11 and 13. Same thing at 3, 6 times 3 is 18, so I subtract 1, I get 17, I add 1, I get 19, once again twin primes. What we have to stop and say is not all numbers that we put into 6x minus 1 and 6x plus 1 are going to give us twin primes, because when we get to the number 4, I do 6 times 4 is 24, I subtract 1, I'm at 23, so so far so good, but when I do 24 plus 1, I get 25, and I have to stop myself. 25 isn't prime, it's never going to be prime, so the 23 and the 25 are not twin primes. Now does that say this isn't interesting anymore? No, it just says just because 6x minus 1 and 6x plus 1 can produce twin primes, it won't produce, it doesn't mean every number I put in will work that way. So kind of what happens instead is all the twin primes that do exist have this form, but all numbers of this form are not necessarily twin primes. I know it's kind of tricky, but just pay attention. Putting a number in doesn't necessarily guarantee twin primes out, but if they are twin primes, I know they came in from 6x minus 1 and 6x plus 1. That's just fun facts. Like if you go, do I have to remember that for the test? Nope. Um, I'm just telling you some things that mathematicians have studied with twin primes. We like to look more that, hey, we have this definition, and then we go, what else? There is a lot more of what else with twin primes, uh, but I thought this was something easy to talk about. So let's move on to our second topic for this video, and it's called the Goldbach Conjecture. So here's what it is, and then we'll talk about it more. Goldbach, his conjecture is any even number greater than 2 can be expressed as the sum of two primes. Okay. So let's step back and say, well, what's going on here? 
So first, let's just say, where did this come from? So this came from um, 1742. There was a German mathematician named Christian Goldbach, and he happened to write this like little side note um, to a letter he was sending to Leonard Euler. So number one, Leonard Euler, big time mathematician. We will talk about him much more as we go on through the semester. He just um, is like has his hands in everything that has to do with mathematics. So you will hear his name again when we get to graph theory. Remember, we talked about Leonard Euler before. So him being in um, contact with him, that's a big deal, right, that he's doing this. But that it's just a little side note is really interesting because it wasn't like a, I have this new discovery. It was just, oh, by the by. Um, let's also say, well, what's a conjecture? So in mathematics, a conjecture is a statement that we believe to be true, but it hasn't been proven. That's astounding, because look at this, 1742, flash forward to 2019, um, nobody has solved it yet, right? So nobody has been able to prove that this is true, even though we know it works. So that's kind of amazing. We've been able to prove a lot of things, but we haven't proved this one yet. So let's look at some examples of it. So what we want to do is go back and pick, a, pick an even number. So let's say we pick 8, and we just want to express it as the sum of two primes. So easy enough, 8 is 3 and 5. And let's pick another number, so let's pick 10. And do you see we could do this in more than one way? So we could say, well, 10 could be 3 and 7. 10 could also be 5 and 5. So the conjecture never said that this had to be done in a unique way. There may, may be multiple ways of expressing the number as the sum of two primes. That's absolutely fine. So let's keep practicing before you do it on your own. So I picked four more numbers. Um, so I said, let's start with 24, and we'll, let's pick 6, and we'll do 86, and we'll do 40. So I just kind of jumped around. So let's go back to this first one of 24 and say, like, oh, can we think of some ways to write it as a sum of two primes? Kind of what I do is I kind of start with primes, and I know I'm not going to use 2. 2 is not going to work, so I go 3. Um, 3 would give me 21, that doesn't work, but if I do 5, 5 and 19 gives me 24, so that works. Um, also 7, 7 and 17 would give me 24, so there's another winner. Um, and then one more, I could do 11 and 13, that also adds up to 24. So I have three different ways to write 24 as the sum of two primes. Um, if I get to 6 though, 6 is kind of interesting because there's only one way to do it. 6 is 3 plus 3. That's the only way to write 6 as a sum of two primes. And if you're going, well, I could do 5 and 1. No, you can't. Remember, 1's not prime. 1's that weird number. It's not prime. It's not composite. It's just a unit. We don't get to do anything fun with 1. So 1 is not going to be one of our answers. So we go, oh, 6, just one way. It's going to be um, 3 and 3. All right, 86. So as it, numbers get bigger, sometimes we have more solutions. So if I look at 86, um, I could do 3 and 83. I could do 7 and 79. I could do 13 and 73, 19 and 67, or 43 and 43. I like to show you again, just like 6 was 3 and 3, 86 can be 43 and 43. Nobody said that the primes had to be unique. Nobody said the sum had to be, you know, like th there was only one way to do it. So you definitely can use um, the same number twice when you're doing the sum, but you just want to use two numbers. Um, and then this last one that we're looking at here, um, 40. 40 could be 3 and 37, 11 and 29, or 17 and 23. So we had a lot of different choices of how to write these numbers as the sum of two primes. Okay, on the test, if you're going, what is she going to do? Um, on the test, I just need you to answer one. I only need you to answer one way, um, so don't worry about can I come up with all the different ways and maybe I got two out of five of them. That's not it. As long as you can do one way, you're in good shape. All right, so how about you try before we finish up this video? Um, here's four more numbers, 16, 34, 50, and 90, and I want you to express these as the sum of two primes. If you want to write multiple ways, that's awesome. If you want to write just one way, that's awesome too. Definitely, though, pause me right now, right? Give yourself a chance to write these down and see what you can come up with, and then you'll see on the next um, slide that I have given all the answers I could find. All right, so let's see how you did. So let's start with 16. Um, for 16, I said, well, we could do 3 and 13. We could also do 5 and 11. With 34, um, we could write it as 3 and 31. We could choose 5 and 29. We could choose 17 and 17. For 50, um, 50 could be 3 plus 47. It could be 7 plus 43. We could do 13 plus 37, or we could do 19 plus 31. Lots of choices there. And then the last one, 90, um, 
you can see I gave us room because I found nine different ways to write it. So I found 7 and 83. I found 11 and 79. Um, 17 and 73 also worked. So did 19 and 71. I got 23 and 67. I also found 29 and 61. And I have 31 and 59. I have 37 and 53. And the last one, 43 and 47. So you can see I found a lot of different ways to write 90. Um, there's not a best answer. They're all awesome answers. So any of those that you wrote on the test would get you full points.